Welcome back, this time name badges or name plates, whatever you want to call them. I noticed a lot of questions about these and so I wanted to make a video giving my take on them and a view of, overview of how they work, some things to keep in mind and some sort of behind the scenes about how they work as well. I'm not the first creator to make a video tutorial or even tooling on how to do name badges, so I did want to call out the other creators that have made tutorials in the video description. With the recent uh, inrush of new players, I also want to make sure that we're sharing videos from other channels. I see a lot of uh, videos shared from my channel and I want to make sure, hey, you know, other people make tutorials, let's share those as well. So you'll always find in my video description going forwards, if there's a tutorial on another channel, I'll try and link it below. So if you check the video description for other creators different people learn in different ways. So if another video works better for you, perfectly fine. If you like my content, you're in the right place. Let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to talk about how um, the default name badge works. And the reason behind that is because I recommend you structure your custom ones by using the default ones as a template. I'll go into that as we go. Let's first of all talk about the structure of a nameplate. To do that, I'm going to go ahead and inspect my own nameplate, which like I said, is a default one. I just prefer using the default one and then we'll get started. So to do that, I've got my developer tooltip here, and I'm just going to aim it at my name badge and push secondary, and then open inspector. Once I've checked that that's in the right location, I'm going to head on to smooth POV. So if you don't have a custom nameplate, which as I've said multiple times, I don't, uh, then what actually happens is a name plate or badge, name badge is created for you at your user root by Neos. It does it all for you. So here you can see my user root. Yep, that's me, user probable prime. And then underneath it, you'll see that there is a slot for name badge, which is the name badge and icon badges, which is the large array of badges I have above my head. So we're going to cover each of these in turn. We'll start with name badge. So the easiest way to get started in creating a name badge is to just steal the default one. Honestly, it makes things so much easier. So what you do, if you want a custom name badge, is go ahead and just grab name badge and drop it into your avatar root. My avatar root happens to be called entity. Yours might be blah, 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 dot FBX, it doesn't matter. You should know what user root is. Just grab it and drop it into there, both name badges and icon badges. Actually, also want the live indicator as well, because that's the uh, the live, um, the red live message that appears above you when you're recording. So do remember that one as well. With those all in there, um, you can then go ahead and save that avatar. And then when you respawn into that avatar, it will have that name badge associated with it. To illustrate that, I'm going to go ahead and save this avatar to a folder in my inventory. Let's turn on private UI and take a look. So here we are, blank folder in my inventory. I'm going to go ahead and hit save with the blue download. That's saved the avatar, and then I'm going to go ahead and load into it. And this time when I load into it, you'll see if we go to the user root, there is no name badge and there is no icon badge. And that's because Neos has picked up that I've created my own, and therefore it won't give me the default one. There are some limitations to that right off the bat, which is that a couple of things don't work as expected. If I go up to the mirror, you should see what those are, which is that the name badge no longer lines up with me. It's still positioned fairly accurately to where I am, which means movement doesn't work, uh, doesn't matter. But if you see when I move my head around, it's not following the head. Let's go ahead and fix that first. We'll fix it on the name plate badge, the icon badges, and also the live badge all at once. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. So if we go into the avatar route now, you'll see name badge, icon badges, and live indicator. So they've all been moved in. So let's go ahead and select name badge. Scroll all the way down to the bottom. Once you get to the bottom, attach component, users, common avatar system, avatar user reference assigner. With avatar user reference assigner um, attached, you can go ahead and hit add on the references list. Find this position at user component, drag target user in. And then you have to do the same thing on icon badges and the live indicator. Now, technically, you can use the same avatar user reference assigner for all three of these, but you could also create one on each slot. It doesn't matter. There's not really much performance gain. I'll be using one just simply because it's easier that way, and I'm showing off that as a feature. So here you go. I can add two more references, and then I can grab icon badges, find position at user, drag target user into the same avatar user reference assigner, and then I can do the same once more for live indicator, grab target user, drop it into avatar user reference assigner. So now all I need to do is re-equip this avatar. And that's why there's a uh, new spot off to the corner there. So I'm going to hop into that, turn around, hop back into me, and then walk up to the mirror again. And this time when I move my head, you'll see that everything is in alignment. So I fix that small bug that occurs when you move your name badge to being a custom one. With that done, we can now talk about how these work. 
I just wanted to fix that bug before we went into you know further details. Let's go ahead and again make sure we're selected on the name badge and we're going to scroll all the way to the top and go through each component one at a time. So firstly text renderer. This just is what is displayed in the name uh, in the name badge. You can change these properties but hold off on that for just a moment but just know it's here and know that it acts like any other text render that you might see inside Neos but don't change any of these properties just yet. Scrolling down you'll see there's a text on lit material. Don't worry about this too much. This again just changes the colors around a little bit and again don't touch it just yet. Beneath that's a box collider that allows you to click on the name badge. Um, it makes a collider so you can laser it etc. Please keep that there. Same with this bounding box driver. The bounding box driver actually drives this box collider to make it the right size. Please keep these here. I want to select your name badge. Why do I want to do that? It's because of the next component, friend link. The friend link component is what controls what happens when I click your name badge. So when I click your name badge, it'll open up the contact screen to your user. That's very important, and I treat that as an accessibility feature because sometimes I can't read your name tags. If you use a Metallica or like heavy metal band font, I can't read it. I click your name badge to find out who you are. That's nothing against you as a person or your choices in fonts. It's just so I know who you are. So do make sure that that is there and works. How do you make the friend link component work? The answer is this next one called the avatar name tag assigner. You remember when I was saying earlier that you shouldn't be touching those fields just yet? That's because the avatar name tag assigner is going to mess with you a little bit if you start touching those fields. To explain this, if we look at the first list on the avatar name tag assigner, that is the label targets um, list, what this does is it uh, will write your username into anything that's listed here as text. So what this will do is when you load into this avatar, it will write your username to text on text renderer, and you betcha that's the text up here. So if you wanted this text to say something other than your username, all you'd have to do is clear this out. So text on text renderer, exit out, and now you can type whatever you want to in there. When typing alternative things into the text renderer on your name badge, do remember that it should, should still be a reflection of who you are. I understand that there are characters, um, things like RP, things like identity issues, etc., where you want to have a different, uh, a different name up there. That's totally fine. But do remember that most of the time it should try and be your username. Again, that's just an accessibility feature, so I can look around the world and I can be like, ah, that's Probable Prime over there in the corner. They're about to crash my world because I because you know they're a bad user. I can go ahead and find them and I can ban them. I can click their name tag and get to their friend status. Beneath that is the user ID target. That drives the friend link to the appropriate user ID. Never clear this because if you clear this, the friend link will get out of sync and uh, then I won't be able to click your name badge and find you. And uh, that's again an accessibility thing. Please leave that there. Uh, next is color targets and outline targets. These are both color targets and these control the color of the name badge. If you look at mine, it's gold and has an outline because it's fancy because I'm on the team. If you don't want it to be gold and you don't want it to have an outline, clear both of these again by clicking the X and now you can choose whatever the hell color you want. So with both of those cleared, you can scroll back up and you can play with color to your heart's content. So here you go. It's it's now red with a gold outline. I can scroll down to that text on lit material and I can go ahead and change that to red as well. And now I have a really big glowy red name tag of doom. And that also won't change if I re-equip the avatar because I've deregistered those targets. So that is avatar name tag assigner for you. Next, and this one is again really important for again accessibility reasons, avatar nameplate visibility driver is what controls if your nameplate is visible when a user selects that option on the home screen of their dash. Let me just go to the home screen of my dash and show you what I'm talking about. On the home screen of your dash there is this nameplate option. If this is set to all it will show all nameplates. I have this on 100% of the time because I just like seeing your name gives me comfort. Um, if you set this to non-contacts, anyone that is not a contact will have a nameplate on. Anyone that is a contact will have it off. And if you set this to hide, it will hide all nameplates regardless of contact status. This is really good for immersion and RP and things like that. Or if you're just like hanging out watching a film and nameplates are getting in the way, just change it to hide and then they'll hide. Now that thing here on this home screen will only work on nameplates that have the avatar nameplate visibility driver set up. If you've copied the default name badge from the user root into your avatar, this will be set up for you. But if not, you can add this component, make sure that the visible is set to the active property of this slot. And that's why it is purple, because it's being driven by the avatar name, what's it called? Avatar nameplate visibility driver. 
So there you go, those are the basic components that make up a name page. Now we're gonna go into a couple of positional things. Um, we did fix these earlier, um, particularly the position at user using that avatar user reference assigner, but now I want to talk about what these are actually doing. So firstly, the look at user component is conforming the nameplate to always be looking at the user that's looking at you. That's because it has target at local user set to on. What this means is if I have a user behind me, the nameplate will rotate such that I can read their name from behind or face that way or face that way. Wherever they are in the world, it will look at them and so they can read it. Again, very important. You will notice that the source position offset has a uh, pink color to it, and that's because it's being driven by this values override. The values override is basically applying an offset to um, this uh, look at user just for the user who's wearing the avatar. That's controlled here by this uh, values override here. This makes the behavior for look at user a little bit more better on um, uh, the user that's wearing the avatar. Otherwise, it will do like weird things and freak out a little bit. So just leave that there. There's no reason to change it. Moving down, there is the position at user component. The position at user component controls where the name page is positioned. In this case, I want it positioned above my head, and so I'm using the head and root, which is again the default from the name badge from the user root, so you can leave it there. Uh, that is what we also fixed when we use the avatar user reference assigner. Sometimes people want to change the height at which the nameplate is rendered. So if you want it higher or lower, all you need to do is change this target position offset. If you want it to go higher, increase this number. If you want it to go lower, decrease this number. If you want it to go to the left, change this number. If you want it to go forward or backwards, change this number. Some users will attempt to change the number at the top here in the position, but that's being driven. It's pink. And the reason why it's pink is because of the position at user component. So just go ahead and change this number. If your nameplate is being weird and it's positioning itself for other users who are not you or not positioning yourself as we saw earlier in the video, make sure you're using avatar user reference assigner to set the target user property and make sure position at local user is unchecked. With that done, we've covered the entirety of nameplates or name badges. I keep mixing up the names. I'm sorry about that. The official name for them is name badge. Um, the only thing I didn't show you, actually, I forgot, I'm sorry, I'm jumping around a lot, it's a long video to record, is fonts. Now, fonts are actually extremely easy to set up, and again, I see them overcomplicated sometimes, they don't need to be. Uh, all you need to know is that you can import any font file from your computer. If it's a font file, OTF, TTF, I don't even know the difference between those, but if it's a font file, import it in exactly like a texture or a uh, model, and it will work fine. To illustrate that, I'm going to go ahead and grab a font. Now, fonts can appear inside public folders, but do note that fonts have licenses. So it's very important that you check the license for the font that you're using and your ability to use it. Uh, believe it or not, there are paid for fonts. Those fonts are usually like really cool and they're used for, you know, like big ticket items. But hey, uh, if you find a font file, you can go ahead and use it. So this here is the Chromia font, which I found in a folder of mine. I don't know, it's a font file, what do you want me to say? All you do is grab this font with your one hand and click in the font with the other hand. Whoops, I missed. There you go, and the font has changed. Do not, and I repeat, do not mess with font chain. Font chains are very complicated and you can easily mess with the default font of the world. Just replace it with the font that you'd like. And then if we go up to the, um, the mirror here, you'll see, hey, the font has changed. If that's not clear on the screen, I do apologize for that. I did make a really junky name badge by changing the color easier, and it's the wrong way around, but that is quite clearly a different font on my screen, at least. So there's how to change the font. So there you go, now that truly is the name badges dealt with. Let's go on to icon badges. Icon badges are a little bit more complicated because of the subfolders where they have all the badges that you have. For me, it's huge because I have a lot of badges. For you, it might be smaller, or you might even have none. That's totally fine. Uh, again, if you take a look through it, you'll see that there is the component at the top, Avatar Badge Manager. That just adds the badges that you're entitled to to that badges hierarchy. You don't need to touch it. Avatar Nameplate Visibility Driver, exactly the same as the Nameplate um, Avatar Nameplate Visibility Driver, controls whether the icon badges appear if you are um, have that setting checked on the home screen of your dash. Some people like to hide their icon badges. If you'd like to do that, then what I'd recommend is just making this uh, slot underneath the uh, avatar route and then uh, setting up the avatar badge manager but turning it off or, or configuring it in such a way that it, it doesn't actually create any badges there. Uh, if you don't do that, 
um, or if you uh, elect not put that icon badges slot underneath your avatar, Neos will create one for you and then it will just be like, yo, here's your badges. So if you don't want to show any badges, you need this slot here and then you just turn stuff off until it doesn't appear. Beneath that, we have the look at user component again with that values override to make it work better for the person that's wearing the avatar and a position at user, which is positioning it uh, at my head again. You'll notice here that the target position offset for the uh, icon badges is higher than the name badge position offset. So if you scroll down here on the name badge, you'll see, hey, the target position offset is 0.23 up and this is 0.31 up. So if you want to swap those around, you convert those numbers. If you want something to be higher or lower than each other, just change those numbers. That's another common complaint I see is they like uh, users use larger fonts, you know, really big, loud fonts. And then the icon badges like clip in and they how do I fix them? Change this number to be higher and it'll move those icons up. That's all there is to the icon badges. You can add custom badges, that's a topic for another tutorial though. The last one here is the live indicator, which is often overlooked. And again, it's an accessibility feature, and I would argue also a privacy feature. Um, it will show if you're recording. Uh, it does that using a variety of mechanisms, um, and it's very important that you have one of these. It's also very important that you don't try and bypass it. If you do, I will be angry at you, and I will shake angry cat gifts at you. Uh, it's very important that we know if someone is recording. It's just a common courtesy. Let people know that you are recording. Um, this uses the avatar live indicator component, um, and the look at user component to, again, make it look at users, has the offset to make sure it doesn't freak out for the user that's wearing the avatar, and a position at user component which positions it at the user with, again, a larger offset than the icons or the name badge. So if you want the live badge to be in a different location, again, just change this value. That really is all there to it. Um, it's overcomplicated a lot, I think, because people are building their name badges by themselves. If you just copy that one from the user root into your avatar, you have like almost a perfect setup for it. Everything's set up for you. The icons are set up, the heights, the positioning, which you do have to do the user reference assigner there, but that's really quick. Uh, and then if you just clear a couple of fields on the name tag assigner, you get color control, text control, font control easily, and you don't need to do anything crazy. Speaking of crazy, I have seen name tags that do use animations, visual effects, this is like text sliding, colors pulsing, all sorts of stuff like that. Entirely up to you, just remember that each and every property that you see is drivable by logic. So for example, I could make my name tag be rainbow by just driving the color property of the text renderer here. I can make the size bigger and smaller by changing the size here. I can change what it says using logic by just writing text to the text field of that text renderer. Uh, and now, for a few comments on accessibility. Again, I know I've been talking about them a lot. We'll go ahead and head back to third person. Some recommendations which are based in accessibility for you, but are also based on common courtesy. Number one is use a clear font. I don't think it was this take, it was probably an earlier take of the video. I mentioned heavy metal band name fonts. Don't use those. No one can read them. They might look cool, but no one can read them. Secondly is watch bright colors. If your nameplate looks like a neon sign, you're probably doing it wrong. Make it easy to look at. Feel free to customize it as much as you like, but it shouldn't hurt to look at. I shouldn't be looking at the surface of a sun when I'm trying to read who you are in a world. Make sure you have all those components I mentioned on and enabled. If they're not, I might actually ban you from my sessions. There's no like moderation rule that says you can't have those components messed around with, but please do. It's just a common courtesy to users who need to understand who you are in a session. Um, and then when it comes to other things like that, I mentioned colors. Uh, animations, make sure they're not too flashy. Do you remember that I always have them on? And so if you've got this huge animation playing, uh, it's going to be really distracting. Like ideally it should just be your name. I've seen some users that do the VR chat thing where um, when you're further away, it shrinks to a smaller circle, which just has your profile picture. That's okay. I don't mind it. Um, but uh, do make sure again that it's readable. It has all those components set up. If you'd like to see me do that, that'd probably be a request for another tutorial. I wouldn't do exactly VR chats one. I don't like copying um, VR chat in that regard, but I could show you some cool stuff that we could do of name badges, maybe sort of animations or effects. If you want to see that, do let me know. I do believe that's all I've got to talk about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, drop them in the comment section of this video and I'll get back to you. Do check out that video description for links on other tools, techniques, and videos, tutorials about name plates, name badges. I keep interchanging the name, I'm sorry. Um, they might be clearer to you because they might be shorter. I did want to provide a very in-detail methodology for doing it and understanding how everything works, and that's why this video is a bit longer. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.